We want to thank you for flying with Air Peterbilt. Rest assured, your diesel truck will make it there in at least two pieces. It's all good until it's not, right? <laughs> not that it wouldn't be anything but good. <laughs> it's very nice. Man, we're getting the hang of this. I tell you what, these boots make me a better driver. That's for sure. Hey, Luke. What? Did I hear my name? Did, you hear, did I say cowboy? <laughs> I hear some guy rolling in, Jake Brake going though. <laughs> <laughs> like, how low a speed can I still get the Jake Brake? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Like, I'm not gonna go fast enough that I have to shift, but I'm at least gonna go fast enough that Jake Brake sounds good. That's right, uh, that's right. Well, it sounded good. Yeah. It sound better with 3,000 horsepower, but... All righty, guys. Well, maiden voyage with the new race trailer officially in the books. We took the 05, uh, which you guys have not seen in a while. So there's a couple different parts to this video. First off, first haul with the new race trailer in the books. Completed massive success. No real issues. Uh, the only trip that we've had previously to this with the race trailer uh, was just bringing it home. A little bit of a different story with a little bit of weight in it. Uh, just kind of getting a feel for everything, but uh, really went pretty smoothly. So we brought the 05, uh, which is actually ready for its next stage in life. If you guys have been following along, this truck uh, has been getting a ton of work done by Michael, uh, getting prepped and ready to come to SNS Diesel Motorsport uh, for its MoTeC uh, electronic system and a lot of other really, really cool stuff for this upcoming year. So kind of killing two birds with one stone. The weather's getting kind of iffy, so we wanted to make sure that it stayed really, really nice. So we stuffed it in the new race trailer um, and really went really, really well. One of the big things when we built this trailer was 
was uh, versatility, right? You guys have heard me talk about how we're gonna put the rail and my other Pro Street truck on top of it and do the do the lifts a little bit. Um, if not, we'll put a link in the video, but uh, it also can do um, at least the 05, we're not sure about in front of it if it if it needs to, uh, because we can basically still leave the lifts down in the trailer, and that's kind of what we did. So it's it's it is a very very tight uh, fit width wise. And again, how much more we can stuff in here if it could actually fit two trucks? Maybe I'm not sure. Maybe maybe two regular cabs. Maybe like two shorties. I don't know exactly. Uh, but so what you're saying is we need another shorty. What I'm saying is the first gen could be made into a shorty uh, with, with one afternoon and a, and a cutoff wheel. Anyway, squirrel. For a lot of you guys who have been following along for a very, very long time, I feel like it's just, it just this is just like a big moment, a big day for, for me. I mean, I've had uh, the dreams of the Peterbilt and a full-size trailer and the fact that the first trip we got to put the 05 in it it's just like I don't know I feel like it's a dream come true for for a little kid uh we've we've worked really really hard and uh driving it up here I, I didn't even listen to music the entire way because I was just like I'm in my own head I'm grateful I'm appreciative uh this this journey has been insane and to kind of just haul the 05 which is my first ever diesel truck and what it's turning into in this setup just seems absolutely surreal but uh sidetracked again but trailer did great uh drove really really well honestly there's really not much to say or tell other than uh we stuffed it in here we got the we you guys can see our e-track that we ran down the uh, entire length of the trailer we kind of just tied into that really we didn't even know how we were going to tie it down until this morning but uh got it in there got it tied down everything stayed put i mean and as you can see it did in fact not go anywhere um so that's two <laughs> thumbs up so the second part of this video and what we're really going to get into today on the video is the next phase of life for the 05 we haven't really had an 05 update video um if you guys have never watched a video before or seen another uh, video of mine, uh, this 05 quad cab short bed truck is my first ever diesel truck. I've had it for years and years and years and years and years, and it has just progressed into this monster of a machine. Um, and the next phase of life where uh, we are gonna be rewiring and reharnessing the entire engine management system of this truck is getting uh, completely redone. Michael uh, has spent months and months uh, putting data logging sensors. Just, we're gonna go over all of that once we get it inside the shop, cause it is a little chilly out here. We're Michael's going to continue to kind of like lay out all of the new harnesses for the entire truck with the help of Andre, with the help of the guys at SNS. Um, so super, super exciting day. Uh, it's been a huge project. It's been a very, very big project, but it should pay out massive, massive, massive amounts in the long run as far as what this truck is capable of doing, the power that it's going to be able to produce uh, and do it safely. Um, so you guys know that SNS Diesel Motorsports handles all of our fuel injection stuff, uh, not only on the Cummins stuff, the Ford, the Duramax, pretty much anything that has to do with um, management stuff and fuel systems. So they are our trusted number one guys wouldn't trust anybody else so if you guys need fuel system stuff make sure you guys check them out especially all you six seven ford guys that uh, have cp4 disasters waiting to happen um i would highly recommend checking them out but enough said truck's gonna come out we're gonna get prepped we're gonna get ready we're gonna stuff it in there and then we're gonna go over the truck and kind of show you guys all of the hard work that michael has poured into this thing because the details on this truck are second to none and i will i will bet both of these boots that this is the, I'm not going to say the, oh, you know what? Screw it. I am, <laughs> I am going to say the nicest quad cab truck out there. Like there are, there are some really, really nice ones, but it's insane. I'm, I'm so proud to have this truck where it's at and have him pour in his hard work to the truck. So I'll keep rambling, but I'm just insanely excited. I'm insanely pumped. Um, so yeah, let's, let's get this thing out and let's, Get it in there so we can show you guys all the cool shit. I was gonna say they haven't seen that. <clears throat> My bad. They haven't seen that. No. Okay, I'll grab the keys because it's locked. But the old race trailer, our 48 foot race trailer, it's basically just a big version of that. And me and Michael spent quite a bit of time landing this 
door. That way, whenever you did pull something in on that back rack that you could still open up the door. Try to measure as good as you can, but sometimes it doesn't always land that way. So thankfully, all of our measurements were right because we still can open the door of the 05 to get out and come out this back door, which doesn't sound like much, but if you've ever been inside an enclosed trailer and you're a little bit of a bigger guy, you try to get out. I mean, it's it's definitely cramped. It's a little tight when you're in a bigger truck. So Especially with a cage. With a cage. So this back door worked out great. So one thing I will say that does need improvement on the, on the setup is the fact that we still have the factory program in the Peterbilt and it could use a little more power. Like it's, it's, it's not like it's bad, but I'm not sure if you can tell, you know, factory 430 horse setup in there, you know, got some, got some room to be improved upon. So kind of the way that the rack setup is set up right now is, is pretty similar to how the rack setup will be with the other drag racing setup, uh, pit vehicle up on top, lifted up. And you can kind of see we've got, uh, roll cart. And I mean, we're going to have a lot of other racing stuff in here, but you can kind of get the general gist of this rack will go up and will leave us enough room. Even I think we have it marked on here. The smart car currently was what we were planning on doing. And the rack setup will be about right here, which is still high enough to get roll carts um, and a bunch of other stuff stuffed in here. So you can kind of kind of see what I'm envisioning. The, the racks can be at two different heights to accomplish a couple different things. Luke, I don't know how, how unreal this feels to you, but to me, this feels like, like, I'm, it's cra it's madness to me. Stokes? I, oh, like, beyond what I could ever even <laughs> tell somebody. It's the real deal. It just doesn't even feel real. Like, I'm speechless. I'm, I'm speechless. <laughs> it doesn't happen very often, honestly. Usually I can blab pretty, 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 pretty decent amount. It's been a long time coming, right? Oh yeah. yeah it's, uh... When did you buy this truck originally? When I was 18. Nice. I think I, I think was this 17. I mean, like I've Ooh, had. I can tell 18 year old Greg what was happening right now. <laughs> yeah, it's just been, it's been, it's been, it's been a wild ride, but I do think you're gonna need a bigger turbo though. Yeah, that one's kind of small. Have you seen the dashes? I haven't seen it complete. Ninja just knows how to get it done. Ninja's got it done. It is legit. It is definitely legit. Full, uh, full dash with some mods. Yeah, I mean, pretty much just you know stock, stock plus. You know, it still feels like a regular-ish truck inside. That's that was the goal. I mean, it looks like a regular truck on the outside. Yeah, that's the goal. It's a beast. It's should be should be. Check that box for sure. Yep. Uh, you guys did awesome. Ah, uh, Michael. Michael did awesome. If you guys haven't seen the 05 in a very, very long time, really, honestly, the last time the truck was out and doing anything or performing was UCC of last year. We have 
gone through some massive, massive changes between UCC and now. So we've talked about MoTeC quite a bit uh, is kind of like the next evolution for the truck and what we were going to be gearing up. There's been a lot of other truck changes that we want to go over. So this is going to be like a massive, massive update video for the 05 and kind of some of the reasoning. So after UCC, um, we decided to pull the plug on the truck as far as using it the rest of the season. Um, not that anything was realistically wrong with the truck at all. We could have continued to use it at the power level that we were comfortable with and the times that it was racing, but that gets boring for the most part. We wanted to push the truck and we wanted to go faster and use more nitrous and make more power. Um, so with that kind of comes the responsibility of making sure all of our engine and our vitals and all that stuff stays good. And uh, it really was just to the point where we were uncomfortable with how we were controlling the truck and, and making sure everything was staying safe. So basically Michael was like, you know, Greg, how, how, how far do you want to continue to push this? I was like, well, I, I mean, pretty far. I don't know where the stopping point is. He's like, well, you do know, like, you know, we're, we're using all these different computer systems. We've got nitrous, we've got engine, we've got transmission, and it's, it's really difficult to nail down and pinpoint the performance of everything meshed together without uh, a system like MoTeC that slams it all together and lets us control things to a very, very fine they detail. All do. They all do great things by themselves. They don't work well together. That's the, that's the premise of MoTeC, making everything work together. The journey last year kind of started out uh, really with 2,000 horsepower in mind. So <laughs> we, started, we started with the goal of 2,000, and we crested that, I think, within the first time it got on our dyno, correct? Mm -hmm. And it just went, uh, here was our goal and it went like this so this is where the snowball kind of comes into play so 2000 horsepower was the goal we went well above that within the first few times that we were on our dyno other people's dyno um, we had our little uh, mishap there right before ucc <laughs> And uh, also the one key thing that I wanted to kind of point out was uh, at UCC, I don't know if a lot of people do or don't know, but we only made one dyno pass at UCC. Uh, it was a, right around 2000 horsepower and we had a factory ECM failure on the dyno. So we were going to make some changes and try and shoot for a much, much bigger number uh, on our new turbo setup uh, that we had on the truck for UCC and ECM went bye-bye. So uh, not only there's, there's many different reasons of this massive overhaul and changes, but uh, not only is the factory computer only good to a certain extent of manipulation and changes, but we also actually had a failure where it cost us uh, a, a lot of points and horsepower in, in the main stage competition that we were shooting to use the truck for. Um, so that was another big point that I wanted to make sure everybody was kind of like fully fully aware of the snowball is starting so we have power management and then doing more horsepower more everything and then we still want to try and pull a trailer the goal for the truck is still and always as will be uh, besides ucc it's not really a ucc truck um it's it's still a very capable do all turn signals lighting all that stuff will still be fully functional able to do everything a normal truck would still be doing. This will still be a completely bone stock truck when we're done with it. So yeah, we're we're here at SNS and we're gonna try and go through some of the other big changes. Uh, we're gonna get Luke in here in a little bit and kind of just run through uh, some of the stuff that Michael's been killing himself over for the last few months with this big, big overhaul, really in preparation for world domination in, in 2024. So, you know. <laughs> so some of the things that are not changing before we get into what has changed on the truck. So we're still gonna be running our Freedom racing engines basically competition engine that we've had in there uh, from UCC we're obviously going to continue to stick with the guys over at Freedom they have been nothing but amazing I think in our last update video we kind of gave you a little brief inkling that uh, between Michael and a lot of other people but uh, Logan Yelton has uh, kind of came on board and like revamped our transmission program for this truck uh, so super super pumped about that so engine and transmission while transmission did go through some changes like still 
48 uh, RE transmission, Freedom Racing Engines uh, engine. Uh, still gonna be utilizing the same turbos that we put on and built for UCC last year. Some of the other stuff that like didn't really change, we're still running air to air, just that same kind of truck vibe. Stock style radiator did, however, move the radiator cap to this side, I don't know. That's just one of those nerdy things that I like because I don't like coolant getting near the turbo. We redid the low side uh, fuel pressure. So we got rid of the lift pump out back. So our fuel pressure kind of goes up and down. So we put the tank in front of pumps. So that's new fuel cell. Basically upgraded to the SNS SP3000 yep. style. Yep. So we have the tank in front of that and then gravity on top of g-forces and everything else while racing goes straight down to the sp3000 down here what is the sp3000 it's it's their version of the low side fuel system basically just the baddest lift pump you can put on one of these things to make power so, so. it's basically a it's it the lift pump is now driven off of the back of one of the cp3s gear driven mechanically rotor style pump yes i really like this this is like my little geek out part I'll show everybody <laughs> yeah oh can you see can you see in there fill it up halfway let's fill it up this much so we got a we got a ruler welded in there so now we have numbers to go off of not that they're accurate but you gotta you got something to go off of that is great it's just the little things for me so big fuel system upgrades on top of all of the new management system stuff new pumps probably going to end up with uh different injectors um seeing that we're not limited to what a factory computer can uh manipulate so to say correct yeah factory computer with five nine injectors but then we can now that we have motec we can step up to a six seven injector make more power with those so that's the the quick gist of it uh, and then we also have their fuel filter base, just a clean way to run all the lines, not having T's and Y's and everything. So everything's just got its separate hose. It will be nice to go to the 6.7, big dog injectors, a little less leakage too. So uh, it can handle more pressure with less pump demand. More pressure, le more pressure, less leakage. Less leakage, yep. Hey, you sold me on big dogs. Big dogs. <laughs> big dogs in? Oh yeah, yeah. Put, right. put, the, put the big dogs That's in. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're going I mean, big you dogs. Stretched. You had hundreds in this thing forever. In our last update video, we did show you guys the uh, dashes uh, that Kevin over at Davis Brothers was awesome enough to kind of graft into our factory dash. Um, again, super important goal for the truck was to, uh, again, maintain full truck-ish things. So the dash is in there, even though we've got two MoTeC dashes in there, uh, it looks really really nice really really uh oe fit uh do we want to touch on michael or, or luke the 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 two dash thing is is fairly wild and not very common at all ever yeah. because we want to be different so bad that we just do things that are <laughs> so wild and different <laughs> <laughs> They're such gluttons for punishment mm -hmm. and signing up Andre to be a super glutton for punishment <laughs> on running uh, MoTeC and the devices and then the two dashes. But it will be cool to have even like we were talking about, like you guys are testing power window functionality and running all that stuff via the MoTeC and the PDM, mm -hmm. doing power windows, doing turn signals, doing, you know, all the, all the things that normally these trucks don't have. Like Andre's just asking, Hey, what about windshield wipers mm -hmm. and, and washer pump and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of that flexibility to maintain yep. factory ish features. My favorite I was lobbying for crank windows. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he, he's never going to roll them down anyways. He likes tent too much. Yeah. In the back here, uh, we've done quite a bit. Move the battery. Uh, that's not really that big a deal. You guys can see some of the kind of, I would call them the, the PDM is what the nerds are calling them. But you know, all the accessories, the, the, the way the accessories are going to work. Some of that stuff is back here as well. Tony from hammer tech, uh, race cars kind of got us set up with a pretty, pretty rowdy fire suppression system, seeing that we're going to be, uh, just slightly over stock power level with the truck. And we are going to, the whole goal is to push the truck to the, to the max. We want to make sure we're being safe. So we've got uh, a pretty rowdy fire suppression system inside the cab for me um, and also in the in the engine so uh, that's some of what you see back here with the the tanks and the nitrous and stuff like that so um, that was a, a big big undertaking as well
<laughs> you show them the steering wheel. My favorite part. It comes off. That's it. It's easier to get in and out. Bro, why didn't you tell me that <laughs> while I was filming? <laughs> Um, so we've got a few more buttons on the steering wheel that uh, will do things and stuff. The real question is how long is the plastic going to stay on the steering wheel and the plastic going to stay on the dashes? I'm That's actually, what I was just asking Michael. Uh, I'm a plastic off right away kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> they, I've already taken the plastic off the wheel quite a few times. The dashes, uh, I feel like, might be. Just talking about yours, you kept it on the dragster for a couple months, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Longer than that. It had quite a few it, passes on I it think before it, it ever got peeled off. I think the arms of, you know, arms of it. That song <laughs> played when he took his off. <laughs> I saved it. I still have yeah. it. Did you really? Yeah. <laughs> That's still awesome. It. That is awesome. But inside the truck, uh, still the same factory carpet, headliner, door trims, door panels, dash. Still the same seat configuration from, from last year. So we have not blown holes in, in the ship, so to say, as far as trying to cut massive amounts of weight out of the truck by any means. Realistically, all of the big changes for this upcoming year and, and this big project, this big process is really uh, to push the truck further, push it harder, do it as safely as possible and be in control of it to the fullest extent with um, how far we're going to push it. So, you know, you want to be in control. There's a lot of expensive uh, parts and pieces on this and guessing on something or not feeling 100% confident in changes that we're going to make or how quickly we can make changes on the fly with this system too, as well as another huge point um, really just, just isn't, isn't going to produce the results that we want to do. So uh, it's, it's a lot of effort and it's a lot of time, uh, but it should yield the, the best and the biggest results for what we're going to try and do with the truck this, this upcoming year. So I think that summarizes it in a, in a nutshell. That's exactly what I was going to say. That's what you were going to say? Yeah. You wrote that out for me. I've actually read right. the script a few times right. to kind of get that, get that <laughs> dialed. But uh, it takes an army. It takes a team. Michael has poured so much time and effort into this truck over the last couple months. And obviously everybody that you see here on the window and, and then some couldn't do it without those guys as well. So we're super excited to kind of complete this next phase. Michael's kind of uh, mounted. How many sensors do you think are on it? We say like 50 oh, ish. At least, at least. Yeah. So we have plus a, 85 rock lights. <laughs> there are over 35. Yeah. There's, there's, a, 30 there's over 30 rock lights on the truck. I will, <laughs> you know, not that you guys care about any part of the Motec or any part of that cool stuff. I mean, we have rock lights on the truck now, so, um, and they have, polished mirrored stainless mounts from the guys over at dirty deals anyway i had squirrel we've been waiting for this day for a long time um michael's mounted everything that was a lot of like not that this next phase isn't just as hard uh but so much logic has went into how the truck is going to operate because there is no computer preset that says this button's going to roll this window down now the whole entire truck needs to be rebrained so to say so Michael's been doing that a lot with Andre and all the guys at SNS and uh, all the sensors that are mounted on the truck, pressures, uh, temperatures. Truck decides to fart, I think we'll, we'll know it. But um, <laughs> so there's tons of nerd equipment on this vehicle now. So um, now we just have to connect all the wires, so to say, in a very easy way to say it for normal people like me and you. Um, but we got to connect the wires. We got to write all this. They got to, they, I'm, I'm taking myself out of that, but they have to write all of the, all of the firm. What, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? That's not going to make me. Calibration work, basically. Calibration work. Logic's a good word. Too. So that all has to be written into, rebrained. yep, rebrained. Yeah. Rebrained. I mean, that's, I feel like we're just rebraining it. So, uh, the second half is what, uh, needs to take place now. Um, but that's pretty much it.